Good morning. I have several questions, obviously, about the Sunrise Bill. Um, my first question is, how many staff do you currently have in the vicinity of Sunrise? Uh, I'd have to get that answer for you specifically. I can tell you that um, when we purchased Sunrise in 2009, we had 21 state park supervisors for 139 forest and park recreation areas. Today we have 16. Uh, the closest one to Sunrise is at Gillette Castle. I believe they have two other staff there. And uh, based on the uh, attrition that we expect from retirements, there will be further, further uh, reductions in staff in the field. Um, that's actually a follow-up question. I'm curious, um, having personally, personally knowing who the supervisor is at Gillette Castle, can you please tell me how many other state parks he supervises in the area of Sunrise? Uh, again, I'd have to get you that information. The way we carve up the state to ensure that uh, every forest and park recreation area has supervision, all the park, the 16 park supervisors all have districts that include multiple facilities, boat launches, parks, forests, wildlife management areas, dams, and the like. Um, Sunrise Park is open at night, unlike others that close at sunset. Who oversees the park at night? Um, all of our parks close at sunset, and we do not allow people in after dark. Um, there's a sign or somewhere on your website that clearly says that the park is uh, open for fishing at night, and that's part of the continuing problem at Sunrise is that you have people there who are totally unsupervised, uh, vandalizing the area. So you're telling me that currently that park is not allowed to be open at night. Uh, I'm going to turn this over to Matt Fritz, our Bureau Chief. He's got some additional details for you. Uh, Matt Fritz, Chief of the Bureau of Outdoor Recreation. Uh, that park is closed at evening. They have to walk in from a good deal of distance down to the waterway, so the park is actually closed. In terms of staffing in that area, we actually have Salmon River State Park is a unit right there as well. Um, so in the area there, we have between the two units that sort of overlap sometimes. Um, there's approximately eight full-time staff plus seasonals. And how many state parks? How many state parks for the Gillette Castle or that unit? There is three to four off the top of my head. All right. I, I think it's much more than that. Um, I think my whole district is 10. And um, in that vicinity, which, again, is part of my concern and the reason why this bill is before us, we have a clear lack of supervision and that's not because you're not doing your job you certainly are and I understand you have limited resources but Sunrise has been dealt blow after blow after the last four years which started with two arsons and drug abuse squatting uh, every building until it's been demolished has had broken windows open doors we've had uh, people arrested on site that come in from the river um, and again, I just want to clarify, you say the park is closed, but people can park and walk in. Therefore, are they allowed to be there when they're walking in or not? They are allowed to be there for angling, for going, to, going down to the river for fishing. Well, that's what I just mentioned. This park, unlike in most parks, is actually open at night. And so you have activity occurring at sunrise at night, all night long, which is completely unsupervised. And it's become a haven, um, almost an attractive nuisance for a lot of people in my community, and it's a big concern. Um, my next question would be, uh, why did the state choose not to auction off the personal property contained within the site? There was an estimate value of over $400,000, and was any property salvaged before the demolition began? Um, they salvage as they go through the property. They do salvage the property. Um, it's brought for scrap purposes or whatever else is done there. It has been cleaned over the years as well. There's been a couple cleanups that have occurred over there. Um, you know, the, the demolition has not occurred. Uh, we looked at it in terms of whether we would put it up for auction, different pieces there. It's something we're still considering, but they're, they're doing the abatement work right now, so we haven't gotten to that phase. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that because I've had a lot of calls from constituents claiming that they're in the process of demolition. And as early as three weeks ago, I had asked about the process of demolition and was assured that the asbestos abatement would be first and demolition was months away. Um, so are you telling me that they are not tearing down structures today? Uh, 
Uh, last time I was out there was approximately a week ago, and they were going through the, the contractor that was on site, was going through the units, the, the many buildings that are out there. Uh, they were still doing some inventory. They had started filling up some dumpsters with abatement-type materials, anything that was left in there, um, any hazards they were dealing with appropriately. Um, as of this morning, I can't say for sure they're demolishing it, but my sense is they are not, but I will check that for sure. The reason I ask is there's two historic buildings on site, and I want to make very sure that the Historic Commission has been brought in to discuss those buildings. And I've also asked uh, for a detailed plan of which buildings are going to be demolished because of that. So would I be able to get a, a copy of that for my constituents? Sure. Um, so the, the Historic Commission, uh, the gentleman associated with that, visited the park probably within the last couple of weeks, as you probably know. Um, so when I was out there about a week ago, we talked about that. We looked at the, the buildings that were potentially of historic nature, certainly the ones by the entrance. Um, if anything is to be done on those, those will be at the end of whatever work happens while we sort out those details. But yes, uh, my purpose for visiting out there actually was to lay out a plan for which buildings, even ourselves, we would like to retain, uh, which ones are beyond, you know, most of them are beyond even salvageable. Um, but we will get you a rundown of sort of how the plan will roll out as we move through it. Great, thank you. My last question, uh, Mr. Chairman, is um, it's my knowledge and, the, and uh, looking through the testimony online regarding this bill, um, some of the foundations are as deep as 12 feet. So I would ask that in that plan there be a way to deal with the significant safety issues of having a building, building demolished, having the foundation exposed uh, for our hikers. Yeah, and we, we actually discussed that on site with the contractors that were there, what we would do with um, the foundations that are left there, how do you deal with them, how do you treat them, what do we need to do in terms of uh, cover over anything that might be exposed. So we, we've discussed that with the contractors, so we'll, we'll outline that as we go forward. Thank you. And I would just say that this, this property is uh, really indicative of what's happening to our state park system with the lack of of um, staffing that we're, we're having at the state level. I'm sure Sunrise isn't the only state park um, that has um, inadequate staff. So, you know, I thank you for working under extreme, uh -huh, extremely bad circumstances. I, I know that you don't have the staff to um, look at the state parks as, as you would like, um, and hopefully we can do something about that because having a supervisor look at six or seven state parks and be responsible for those parks that span hundreds and hundreds of acres is a, a detriment to the community, and it's a real safety concern when you have a lot of buildings on site like Sunrise does. So thank you very much.